press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Namaste children. In our last class, we discussed about classification of human neural system. So, before that, we discussed that in our body, different organs will do their different specific functions by coordinating e to each other to maintain homeostasis. So, what is homeostasis? It is nothing but the ability of an organism to maintain constant internal environment irrespective to any changes in the external environment. That state is called homeostasis. For that we gave, I gave you this example that is thermoregulation. So thermoregulation and thandra, maintaining constant internal body temperature. So we human beings are able to maintain constant internal body temperature in and around 37 degrees Celsius. So yaoriti andra, during summer we sweat more to release excess of heat produced in the body to outside to the environment. Hagene during rainy and winter season we wear sweaters and also we we'll go for bisi bisi uta, bisi coffee, tea tagotivi for what again to maintain constant internal body temperature. So this is nothing but homeostasis. Then we discussed classification of human neural system. So it, uh, it is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And a central nervous system again it is divided into brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system is again divided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. So this somatic nervous system controls voluntary functions of our body whereas autonomic nervous system controls involuntary functions of our body. The again the autonomic nervous system is classified into sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic increases the functions of an organ when demand increases. Suppose while doing physical exercise the function of heart, respiratory rate, everything is going to be increased to provide necessary uh, ATP molecules to the muscles to do the physical exercises. So during that time the functions of our body will be increased by sympathetic nervous system. Once the physical exercise, doing physical exercise is stopped, then the function has to come to normal state. So that is done by parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic increases the functions of an organ when demand increases. Hage parasympathetic decreases the functions of an organ when demand decreases. So this all we discussed in the in our last class. Today we will discuss structure of neuron and types of neuron and neuroglia cells. We know that nervous tissue is made up of two types of cells. One is neuron, another one is neuroglia cells. So today we will discuss about the structure of neuron and types of neuron and also types of neuroglia cells. I will draw the diagram. So this diagram will come for 5 marks for your PU exams. So you should learn to draw this diagram.
this myelin sheet. So these are measles granules. So we know that neuron is considered as structural and functional unit of nervous system. is a structural and functional unit of nervous system. So, this neuron is divided into three parts. One to cell body, dendrites and axon. So, the neuron is divided into three parts. One is cell body, dendrites and axon. So, this is this dendrites this one is cell body or this called cyton or soma or pericardium Then we see centrally situated nucleus, then dotted, this dotted star regions are measles granules, then this elongated one is axon. The blue color one is myelin sheath. And these are squanzons.
and junction between square cells are not soft Ranvia. Branches of axon is Tilo Dendria and these are synaptic knobs. This is structure of neuron. This is multipolar neuron. What I am written here is structure of multipolar neuron. So, the structure of neuron is divided into three parts. One do cell body, dendrites and axon. So the cell body it is oval or spherical in shape. This cell body is also called cyton, soma or pericardion. So it contains centrally situated nucleus and it is surrounded by a granules called measles granules. So this measles granules are also called pigroid bodies. They are also called pigroid bodies. They are nothing but ribosomes attached to endoplasmic reticulum. So, main function is to synthesis protein. Measles granules are nothing but ribosomes attached to endoplasmic reticulum and they synthesize proteins. And this cell body is surrounded by a membrane called neurolemma that means Plasma membrane of the cell body is called neurolemma. Plasma membrane of the cell body is called neurolemma. Again, cytoplasm of the cell body is called neuroplasm. Cytoplasm of cell body is called neuroplasm. Inside this cytoplasm or neuroplasm we see measles granules and uninucleate that is singly, single centrally situated nucleus is present. Arising from this cell body we see branches called dendrites and axon. And this cell body contains all cellular organelles except centrioles. So, the cell body contains all cellular organelles except centrioles that you have to keep in your mind for your competitive exams. Centrioles are absent in cell body. Whereas neurofibrils and other cellular organelles are present. Neurofibrils and other cellular organelles are present. So, Inside the cell body, centrioles are absent. Neurofibrils and other cellular organelles are present. These neurofibrils mainly helps in conduction of impulse. That means to carry impulse from one region to another region. Impulse is nothing but information. So, these neurofibrils helps to carry information in the form of nerve impulse from one region to another region. So, in the cell body, centrioles are absent, neurofibrils and other cellular organelles are present. So, arising from the cell body, 
we see two types of processes. Smaller branches are called dendrites and long one is called axon. So these dendrites again they branch, see here, again they branch to increase the surface area of cyton. And these dendrites always carry information towards the cell body. Dendrites will carry information, all the dendrites will carry information towards the cell body. The one process which is long arising from the cell body is called axon. The region from where this axon arises, that region is axon hillock. Axon hillock. And this axon is surrounded by a myelin sheet. So this is axon. Same way the plasma membrane covering the axon. This is axon. The plasma membrane covering the axon is called axolemma. Again, a cytoplasm inside the axon is called axoplasm. This axoloma is covered by a sheet of myelin. This is deposition of lipoprotein. This is a myelin sheet which acts as a insulator. This is myelin sheet. Myelin sheet. And around this we see a cell called span cells. So we see a cell called span cells. Okay, so axon is a long process which arises from the cell body. It is surrounded by a myelin sheet and also squan cells. Between the <coughs> axon myelin sheet is now it is interrupted. Madhya in myelin sheet is interrupted. So that region is nodes of Ranvier. That region is Nothing but nodes of Ranvier and this axon at the end branches to form telodendria and the telodendria ends in a bulb like structure called synaptic knobs which contain mitochondria and secretory vesicles that means they contain neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters means the tra they transfer information from one neuron to another neuron. So the, these synaptic knobs contain mitochondria. The, the mitochondria then right provides ATP molecules and they contain neurotransmitters like acetylcholine. This is about structure of uh, neuron axon carry information away from the cyton whereas dendrites carry information towards the cyton. Ready? The structure of neuron is divided into three parts cell body, dendrites and axon. Cell body is spherical or oval in shape. It is having a membrane called plasma membrane called neurolemma and cytoplasm called neuroplasm. So inside the neuroplasm we see centrally placed nucleus and granules called measles granules. These measles granules are nothing but ribosomes attached to endoplasmic reticulum. Main function is synthesis of protein. Then arising from the cell body we see smaller branches called dendrites. Again they branch to increase the surface area of cell body and these dendrites carry message towards the cell body. Only one process, one long process arises from the cell body at a region called axon hillock and this axon, the plasma membrane covering the axon is called axolemma, cytoplasm inside it is called axoplasm. It is surrounded by a sheet called myelin sheet. It is interrupted at a region. That region is called nodes of Ranvier. And we see a cells called squan cells. And these squan cells mainly helps in the formation of myelin sheet. 
and this axon ends and it branches at its terminal end uh, giving rise to telodendria and the telodendria ends with a knob like structure called synaptic knobs which contain mitochondria, mitochondria and neurotransmitters like acetyl choline. This is about structure of neuron. Lymph mark dendrites carry information towards the cell body whereas axon carry information away from the cell body. So next we will go for types of neuron. So, based on number and processes, classification, So, based on number and processes from cell body, we have mainly we have three types of neurons that is unipolar, bipolar and multipolar. So, unipolar means it is having only one processes that is axon. See, uni means single. One process will arise from the cell body that is unipolar. This type of neurons are seen in nervous system of embryo. It is seen in Nervous developing embryo is seen in nervous system of developing embryo. Bipolar, bi means what? Two. Two process will arise from the cell body. So one is dendrite, another one is axon. Here we see only the axon, here we see dendrite. Uh, one dendrite, one, one axon in bipolar neurons seen in nerves of retina of eyes. Seen in nerves of retina of eyes. So, by two process, one is dendrite, another one is axon arising from the cell body. This type of neurons we see in nerves of retina of eyes. And multipolar, multipolar means many processes will arise from the cell body. So, like this. So, we see many dendrites and one axon in multipolar neuron. This you see in cerebral cortex of this type of nerves are we seen 
cerebral cortex. So, this is about classification of neurons based on their number and processes from cell body. Unipolar single processes arising from the cell body seen in nervous system of embryo. Bipolar we see one dendrite and one axon arising from the cell body seen in nerves of retina of eyes and multipolar we see many branches arising from the cell body in that smaller branches are dendrites and one long branch is axon seen in nerves of cerebral cortex. Here we have the main are three types this they have given in your textbook whereas other two are there based on processes one do a polar just to know circle a polar and no absence of processes a means absence of processes they don't have any dendrites or axon so information in agate radiate this type of cells we see in hydra and pseudo unipolar pseudo unipolar antandre from the cell body you see one process arising but after arising it again that axon divided into smaller process so this is nothing but pseudo unipolar seen in the dorsal root ganglia of from dorsal root ganglia to spinal cord pseudo means false uni ille enagutte namige unipolar ansutte one day process worker cell body in the bandhi ratke but again it branches hagaki it is pseudo unipolar this type of nerves we see in dorsal root ganglia in spinal cord so either just in tirkola kashta but main age new tirkobe kagiradu about unipolar bipolar and multipolar then based on function Based on functions, so we have again three types of neurons that is sensory neurons or afferent neurons, another one is motor neurons or efferent neurons and these are third one is inter neurons or relay neurons or association neurons. So sensory means Sensory means these neurons carry information from sense organs to central nervous system. They carry information from sense organs to central nervous system. So, you have taste, they carry information from tongue to the brain, from eye to brain, from ear to brain, they all come under sensory or afferent neurons. That means they carry information from sense organs to, to the central nervous system towards the brain. Motor means they carry processed, processed information. From brain to effector organs, organs like muscles and glands. So, this motor are efferent, these neurons exit from brain. They carry processed information 
ಇದೇನ್ ಸೆನ್ಸರಿ ನಾವು ಏನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ತಗೊಂಡೋಗಿರುತ್ತೋ ಬ್ರೈನ್ಗೆ ಅದೇನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಟು ದ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ದ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ವಿ ಟೇಕನ್ ಟು ದ ಮಸಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಮಸಲ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಟು ದ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೀಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೋಟಾರ್ ಆರ್ ಇಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ನ್ಯೂರಾಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬ್ರೈನ್ ಟು ದ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮಸಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ರಿಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಸೆಕ್ರೀಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋಟಾರ್ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆರ್ ಸೆನ್ಸರಿ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೆನ್ಸರಿ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೆನ್ಸರಿ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೋಟಾರ್ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ the carry information from sensory neurons to motor neurons these are types of neurons based on functions next based on structure we have based on structure or presence or absence of myelin sheath we have two types of neurons one is medullated or myelinated neurons another one is non medullated or non myelinated neurons see so this is axon so axon is surrounded by the position of lipoproteins or phospholipids around the axolemma that is nothing but myelin sheet if this myelin sheet is present if this myelin sheet is present around the axon that type of neurons are called medullated or myelinated neurons seen in vertebrates seen in nerves of vertebrates so this process of deposition of these phospholipids or lipoprotein around the axon is called myelinogenesis that is called myelinogenesis this myelinogenesis occurs in peripheral nervous system with the help of squamous cells with the help of squamous cells myelinogenesis will occurs in peripheral nervous system with the help of squamous cells so myelinogenesis occurs in central nervous system with the help of oligodendrocytes with the help of oligodendrocytes this myelin sheet will prevent the leakage of ions and rate of conduction will be faster rate of conduction will be faster this myelin sheet acts as a insulator if this myelin sheet is absent if this myelin sheet is absent then that now sir called non medullated or non myelinated neuron seen in 
in vertebrates and in autonomic nervous system of vertebrates so this is about types of neurons based on structure and presence of presence or absence of myelin sheath so next we go with the neuroglia cells neuroglial cells or glial cells they protect and support neural cells and they provide nourishment to the nerve cells they protect they protect and support and give nourishment nourishment to nerve cells So there are mainly three types of neuroglial cells. Usually, neuroglial cells will be more in number when compared to neurons. So one the neuron it can be one is to three ratio to go both. For one neuron, we see three neuroglial cells. That means neuroglial cells are more in number when compared to neurons. These neuroglial cells are of three types. One is astrocytes. Another one is oligodendrocytes and microglial cells. And these neuroglial cells does not have dendrites or axon. They have processes from the cell body, but they don't have dendrites or axon. So, so it got name because the cell looks like star. Adikya, it got the name astrocytes. This is astrocyte and this is nerve cell. This is neuron. We can see blood vessels also. This is blood vessels. This one is astrocyte. As it looks like star, it got a name astrocytes. Main function of astrocyte is to repair of damaged repair of damaged nerve tissue or nerve cells repair of damaged nerve cells oligodendrocytes and they have less processes arising from the cell body this is again neuron this is oligodendrocytes again this is neuron this mainly helps in myelinogenesis in central nervous system mainly helps in myelinogenesis in central nervous system
and one more cell we have is microglial cells. This neuroglial cell surrounds the nerve cells. That is why they provide support and protection to nerve cells. This is neuro. This is microglial cells which are, they are microbes. They are phagocytic in nature. Phagocytic cells. Phagocytic and the angle or they eat microbes, harmful microbes or disease causing microbes are eaten by these cells. So that is why they are considered as phagocytic cells. These are types of neuroglia cells. Neuroglia cells mainly protect and support the neural tissue and also they provide nourishment to the now cells, the three types astrocytes, main function of astrocyte is repair of damaged now cells, oligodendrocytes, they helps in myelogenesis in central nervous system and microglial cells, they are phagocytic cells, they angle or they kill the harmful microbes that present in brain. That is about types of neuroglial cells. So, thank you. In the next class, we will discuss generation and conduction of nerve